I was raised in purity culture. This was a culture of making women seem like they were property. We were responsible for all the boys around us. If we wore spaghetti straps or short skirt, it was our fault if the boys started having lustful thoughts about us. We were told to not ever wear anything that would cause boys to fail. Because boys had no control over themselves. They only want one thing. And boys can't be responsible for their own lustful thoughts, apparently. They put enormous pressure on the girls in church. We had to be mindful of anything we wore and anything we say that could lead a guy on. Often it seems like the boys were the victims. Their inability to have self-control made the girls nervous and afraid that at any time something could happen and it would be our fault. I don't know what they told the boys during the church service when we had sex talks. Often they would separate the boys and girls. The boys would all go with the adult males to talk about purity culture, and then the girls would stay with the older women in the church who would talk to us about our purity. Most of them were pastor's wives. You're like a piece of gum. You want to be pure on your wedding night for your husband. The more people you sleep with, the more chewed up you become. What will you have for your husband on your wedding night? If you're this used-up piece of chewed gum. Nothing according to the women in the church. Nothing else mattered to girls but our purity. We should not do anything to ruin who we are. Virgins. The problem is, there are so many other issues that go into this. And the church does not look at those issues. This is what I want to talk to you all about today. The first problem is that no matter what they tell you about guilt and shame, there's nothing wrong about exploring your sexuality and what you need in your life. Everyone has their own sexuality. We all enjoy different things. And the only way that you can know this is if you take the time to find out who you are and what you like. People in the church completely ignore the fact that people cannot stay together. They are not compatible sexually. If you're a man who is very vanilla and only likes to do missionary style, and you marry a woman who wants to be more spicy in the bedroom, then your sex life is not going to be fulfilling, which can lead to other marital problems down the road. The second problem is, everyone has different ideas of what they want in a partner. If you stick with the church's idea of one man and one woman, but you are gay or trans, you might not know this until after you get married. This is a problem, because marriage is a legal contract, and this takes time and money to get out of it. If you want a good marriage with the person you love, it needs to be someone you want, and not someone the church says you have to marry. The third issue in the church is marriage. I'm not saying marriage is a bad thing. A lot of people have made it work. I look at the past and think... There's no reason for anyone to rush or to even get married if they don't want to. If you and your partner are equals and you want to have a family without getting married, that's fine. If you don't want kids and just want to live together with your animals, that's fine too. The idea that women and men have to get married very much aligns itself with women being property of men. In the biblical times, women had no bodily autonomy. They were not people. They were simply baby-making machines. And they were passed from father to husband and any other male who wanted to do whatever they wanted with them. They were not allowed to say no or choose their own lifestyles. You were simply a male's toy and a baby-maker. That was it. And if you did not do what your owner wanted you to, then there would be consequences. What's the point of all this, you ask? Well, let me get to Josh Duggar. The church is a breeding ground for this kind of behavior. When you tell men and women to simply refrain from sex, it doesn't work. Oppressing people's needs and desires only makes people want to do it more. They are constantly fighting themselves in their own minds to keep themselves from something that is natural. I remember in church they often told us that men had a problem with porn addiction. The women in the church are preconditioned to think that men need sex all the time. 
in order for this to happen, you as the woman have to make sure that you alone satisfy your husband. This often makes me wonder what they teach the boys in church about this idea and how it affects them every day. Josh was born into the perfect storm for this to happen. He was indoctrinated to think that women were made for pleasing men. He was raised in a house full of girls and parents who had so many kids, they could not care for all of them at the same time. I've seen families with many kids, and the more kids there are, the more likely the kids are raising the other kids, which means less parental time. In addition, he was in a cult that told him that his desires and needs were wrong, unless he was married. The guilt and shame that comes with all of that can create monsters. I am not for one second defending him. He is a person, and he made his own decision. But he is also a product of the environment he was raised in. Which is sad, because religion has played a huge role in this whole story. I know growing up in purity culture, I was in a constant battle with myself on whether my needs were wrong, and prayed a lot to stay pure for my future husband. Knowing what I know now, I wish I had been more open about sex. I wish I had talked to more experienced people, and not just the women in the church, who have only been with one person, and know nothing about sex other than within their own marriages. I wish I had explored more, and understood who I was, and what I wanted. There was no me in religion. There was only this idea of what I was supposed to be. I was this little good girl who did everything the people in the church told me, and I always wanted to do the right thing. Not once did I think about what I needed or wanted. I had to get rid of those ideas in order to be who God wanted me to be. Who did God want me to be? According to the Bible, I was first a slave to God. I have to obey everything he said and stay in this little box. If I step outside the box, I would be punished. God is not a being who wants to be messed with. You obey so you can be with God forever. The second was I was a slave to my husband. I was raised with the idea that the husband was the head of the household. Women were not to make all the decisions or be equal with men. When it came down to whose word was right, it was the man's because God said the one with the dick was allowed to do whatever they wanted. But if you were a woman, you were made to help the man and give him babies. Not just any babies, though. According to the Bible, you needed to give him male babies. Women, you see, are cursed, because we are the reason that men cannot deal with their own issues. We were the ones who were tricked by the snake. We were the ones who gave Adam the fruit and he took it from us to eat. Adam cannot be held responsible for his wife giving him the fruit. Do you see the issue here? There's no accountability at all for men in the church. If they lust after a woman, it's her fault for wearing that shirt or bikini. If they see a woman, and they want to be with her, and they decide that's what they want, then they're going to do it. And it's our fault because us women just seize sexual energy towards men all the time. If you're alone with a boy in a car or in a field, you're the one who has to keep him pure. Don't let him touch you, and don't let him express anything that could cause you both to fall into temptation. This is why so many men in the church fall into the trap of abstinence. They try and fight the urges they have, that are completely normal, and they secretly hurt others in the process. Many times it's with younger people, because it's easier to groom them and make them into something they want. Whether it's their own children or someone else's, they use their power and ability in the church to lure unsuspecting prey, and then they pounce. We not only see this in the Catholic Church with priests who take abstinent vows, we see it in the mainstream churches. I think a lot of people in the mainstream churches were lied to. They were told if they stayed pure for only their spouses, that their sex lives would be fulfilling. I, however, think the opposite is true. 
I've talked to so many women in the church who are not satisfied, and they feel like they cannot do more. That taboo around sex in church really messes with your head. They tell you from the time you were born that women are made to please men. In order to do that, you have to cut off any urges you have in order to save yourself from marriage. Then on your wedding night, you're just going to go ahead and do this activity that you were told your entire life was wrong except in marriage. Can I tell you, there's no switch that can change when you have been taught all your life that this is a dirty bad thing. When you finally get to that point in your life, all the shame and the guilt that has been built up in your mind destroys any love that you might have for your spouse. Purity culture is a horrible way to live and to raise kids in. No one should feel ashamed of who they are. No one should ever feel like they cannot express themselves, including their sexuality. No one should be so sheltered that the day they get married, the only thing they know about sex is that you're there for your husband, and that's it. The lack of education, self-awareness, and accountability creates a lot of horrible people who end up hurting others because they're told this all their life. And this is just how they are, and nothing but God can change them. People need to learn, and people need mental health care, not God. When it comes to purity culture, I will always just say no. It's harmful for everyone involved. And as for Josh Duggar, he's a product of this terrible idea, and he's finally where he needs to be for the safety of others in the world. Hey friends, if you want more overprotected atheists, click on one of these videos, or go check out my playlist about my personal stories of leaving the church. Thanks for watching, and remember, only you can break out of the bubble and start thinking for yourself.